you introduce it into the uh, into the EEG generated from muscles and so on, anything that's not brain signals. And first and foremost, these artifacts usually are larger in amplitude than the actual EEG activity because they're generated by powerful muscles as opposed to tiny neur neurons. Um, we, we distinguish between different classes. So we say there's internally generated artifacts, which um, come from muscles like um, neck muscles are really the dominant ones, but also face muscles like links and so on. Um, there's other things like heart activity, which, which is an artifact source, but not as strong. And um, also it turns out the eyes themselves are actually electrical dipoles. I don't entirely know why, but probably has something to do with these retinal neurons that are all aligned in the same way. Um, and so the eyes actually project into the, to the EEG as a dipole. And when they turn, the projection pattern changes. And then there's externally generated artifacts like the power line noise, like EM spikes from, uh, from floors and lights and things like that, which, which can mess up your signal. But in many cases, these signals are simple enough that you can factor them out. And that's what you want to do um, because it's the same signal projected onto multiple electrodes. So if you observe it in one, you can subtract it from all the others if you know the weighting. And then there's some sensor uh, artifacts. There's shifts in the, in the signal amplitude, just it's called DC uh, shifts or drifts. Um, current, basically. There's cable sway artifacts. If your cables are swaying around, you get lots of low-frequency shifts. There's thermal noise of between, uh, the interface between the metal of the electrode and the skin. Um, that is, that's just noise, and it basically gives you the noise floor. And it depends on the surface area of the electrode. It depends on the material properties and things like that. And then there is so-called quantization noise of the digital analog, uh, analog digital converter. It has a certain stepping, right? And so that's noise. And uh, so here's a couple of actual plots. These are muscle artifacts. So you have some EEG at the beginning and then some muscle turns on in the raw channels. Here's the channel labels over here. Um, and so you see how strong these are with respect to EEG. There's nothing visible underneath. Although we do have some algorithms and other people have developed algorithms to get rid of these things. Um, there's there's a couple of new methods out there. In ICA, independent component analysis, as you saw, can also get rid of muscle activities if they're stereotypical. Um, here are some of the projections of these things. So uh, it's good to know where they come from because in many cases, if you design a brain-computer interface um, and you throw machine learning at the problem and you get a pattern that it might in some cases look like that, and then you know, oh, what I actually picked up was a confound. It was just a muscle that happened to be active whenever the person was excited or something like that because the person tends it up. Um, so it's good to know what's an artifact and what's not. You see they're, they're here under the ears and, and so on. There's a good correspondence with anatomy also. Links are usually peaks. So here's a poster child effect. It goes up and then it has some kind of a rebound and then it settles again. The bar here, the black bar, is one second. And it shows up in most channels, but it's dominant in the frontal channels.